Hey everybody, it's Charles from HumbleMechanic.com and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to replace the filter and fluid on a Volkswagen DSG transmission. So we are going to be doing this service with the Penison DSG fluid kit. This kit comes with 5 liters of Penison DSG fluid. Remember, this is the OE fluid for Volkswagen and Audi DSG transmissions. It also comes with the filter, the seal for the filter housing, as well as the crush ring for the drain plug. In order to do this job, we are going to need a few basic tools. For the most part, this is all going to be normal everyday hand tools, other than when we get to the point where we're ready to fill the transmission. We're going to need a 10 millimeter socket, a 13 millimeter socket, a T25 Torx, or a Phillips head screwdriver, depending on which airbox we have. We're gonna need a 24 millimeter socket, a 14 millimeter Allen, and an eight millimeter Allen. And obviously we're going to need a way to dispose of the old filter and old fluid. Now, I like to start on the top side of the engine and do the filter first, so we're gonna go ahead and start there. All right, so our DSG filter is located on top of our transmission, which is actually right below the vehicle battery and battery tray. There are ways to do this filter without removing all of these things. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. That is the by the book way. It's also really the only way I'm gonna be able to show you guys exactly how to replace this filter. Let's start by removing the engine cover. Now this is a 2010 Volkswagen Jetta Sport Wagon TDI, one of the many engines that we have that does have the DSG transmission in it. We got the engine cover off. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the air box as well. Start by removing this top cover of the air duct. And we can just lay that to the side. Now I'm going to take the entire air box cover off. You do need to remove the lower portion in order to get the battery tray out. We have a couple of options. We can leave the air box all as one unit or we can separate it and take it off in two separate pieces. We can also leave the top of the air box in the vehicle and only remove the bottom. There's really a couple of options depending on whatever way works best for you. I'm going to go ahead and start by separating the two pieces of the air box. This is an older sport wagon, so this has Phillips head screws that hold the air box together. There are other models that have the air box held together with T25 Torx. So depending on which air box you have will depend on whether it's Phillips head or Torx. This will also be a really good opportunity to inspect the air filter for your customer and see whether maybe it's time for that maintenance as well. So now we have our air box separated. Probably wouldn't kill this guy to put a new air filter in his car. If we're going to be removing the top half of the air box, we want to make sure we take a lot of care in removing this small vacuum line because the nipple inside of the air box cover can break pretty easily. I'm going to just go ahead and use a pick and remove that. We'll lay that off to the side in a second. Disconnect the mass airflow meter. And go ahead and take the top portion of the air box off. Separate the air box. Let me just lay that off to the side. Now from here you can actually gain access to the filter. Again, it's buried below the battery tray. But I'm going to go ahead and take the rest of this stuff out of the way, again, to show you guys exactly where we're going to be working. I'm going to go ahead and remove this next portion of the air duct. There's small tabs that you can press that release that really easily. You can see right here, this tab, if you press these in on both sides, this little piece comes right off. There's a number five Allen between the lower air box and the vehicle battery. You'll see that here. I'm going to go ahead and take that off. Now, there are rubber grommets that hold this in. You can see we got our bolt loose, but there are rubber grommets that hold this lower air box in, so we're gonna need to pop those out. I'm not gonna take this portion of the lower air box off, but one word of caution, be very careful because right down here is a small T on a coolant line, and we don't wanna lean on that and break it. Now this airbox does have a vent tube, drain tube at the bottom. So you're gonna need to fish that in and out. Just be really careful because they are easy to break. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and remove the vehicle battery.
Take the negative cable loose first, as I always do. Then the positive. Go ahead and pull the negative terminal, and I like to just tuck it right here behind the fuse box. Pull the positive terminal, and go ahead and remove our battery. Now, normally this engine would have a battery cover over the battery, as well as a 13 millimeter bolt with the hole down right here. This vehicle just happened to be missing it, but I just wanted to make sure you guys note that there is supposed to be a hole down for this battery. All right, next up we're going to be removing the battery tray. It's held on with three 10 millimeter bolts. We have one here at the back. We have one here at the front towards the passenger side and one right below where the fuse panel is. So there's one, two, and then three right at the back. All right, so let's go ahead and remove this. On this one on the bottom at the front near the fuse panel, you may actually want to use a wobble 10 millimeter socket if you have one. That'll make that a little bit easier to remove. Now you'll notice part of the battery tray is underneath these power wires here. So you're just gonna need to make sure that we don't pull on these too much and risk damaging them. All right, set our battery tray to the side. So here is our DSG filter housing. We're gonna go ahead and take that off next. All right, like I mentioned, this is a 24 millimeter socket that you're gonna need. So we're gonna go ahead and put that on the filter and crack that loose. Remember, this is plastic, so we don't need to uh, go to town on it. We also don't need to use any power tools on it either. Once you feel the filter housing start to really get loose, I like to put the ratchet away and just loosen it by hand. That way you can do it nice and slow so you don't make too much of a mess with the fluid. You may or may not get fluid leaking out when you take this filter cup off. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove this cup. A Couple of tips about this filter cup. We want to make sure that we do a really good job of cleaning the threads. If we have too much dirt and debris in these threads, it can actually cause these filter housings to leak. So we want to do a really good job of cleaning this up. Also never a bad idea to inspect the inside of it for any debris either. You'll notice that there is an O-ring on this filter housing. We're going to go ahead and replace that. That is part of the Penison kit. Next up, we're going to go ahead and take our filter out. This filter does basically just pop right out. We have our filter out. We take another look at this filter, make sure we don't have any dirt or debris in it. This filter actually does look pretty clean. All right, so in the kit, we do have a new filter and O-ring for our filter housing. I'm gonna go ahead and set the O-ring right on top of the filter housing so that it doesn't get misplaced. And then we're gonna go ahead and put the filter in. Now this is a paper filter, so we wanna be careful with it. There's also a tiny O-ring on the inside that I always like to take a little bit of DSG fluid and put around this O-ring. Get a tiny bit of DSG fluid, go around the O-ring, and then we're going to snap the filter right back into place. It does have a positive feel when you put the filter in. You can give it a little bit of a wiggle just to make sure that it's installed all the way down. All right, next up we're going to replace the O-ring on the filter housing. I like to use it just a pocket screwdriver and take the O-ring off. Get a little bit of DSG fluid on the new O-ring and put it right back on. Again, lubricate this O-ring as well. Take our cup and we'll go ahead and just put it right back on. Go ahead and tighten our filter housing. I also recommend while we're up top to go ahead and clean any oil that may have spilled back behind the filter. It'll make doing the job from the bottom a little bit easier. All right, so we've went ahead and replaced the filter. 
I'm gonna go ahead and get the battery and battery tray and air box all put back on. Okay, we will start with the battery tray back in first. Get that set in, get our three 10 millimeter bolts. Go ahead and put our vehicle battery back in. Remember this vehicle did not have a battery hold down. If your vehicle does, you wanna go ahead and put that on. It's gonna be much easier to put it on now than when you get the air box all back together. All right, we got our battery put back in. Let's go ahead and work on the air box next. Start with the bottom portion of our air box. I like to hook it underneath this coolant line first. Then we do have to remember to worry about this drain tube and get this installed properly. Once we get our air box in, we start by pushing it down on the rubber grommets. Then we tighten up our number five Allen here. Our really smart customer went ahead and put a new air filter in his vehicle. So we'll go ahead and install our new air filter. Put the top of the air box on. Go ahead and make sure we put our clamp back on our air intake. Plug our airflow meter in, get our vacuum line in. Want to make sure that we route all of our stuff back the same way that it came. Get the lower front portion of our air duct and install that. Get our duct to our lower air box installed right. Put our cover on. Make sure that when you guys are putting this on, this gets snapped in all the way. This is a really common thing that I see where this top cover will fall off and it'll fall down and uh, rest on the fan. We wanna make sure we get everything put back together properly. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up our Phillips head bolts that hold on the top of the air box. All right, we are done on the top side. I'm gonna go ahead and gather all of my tools. We're gonna to put the car up on the air and drain and fill the fluid. Actually, this customer did have a battery box cover. And we wanna make sure we don't forget to put, uh, put the engine cover back on if we did take it off. All right, here we are underneath the vehicle. We're gonna go ahead and drain the fluid. This is the drain plug right here. It's just next to the dog mount bolt on this vehicle. And this is where we're gonna use our 14 millimeter Allen right up into the drain plug. Now, depending on the temperature of the vehicle, it's gonna depend on how much fluid we get out right away. I always like to crack the drain plug loose and then get my drain pan ready and take it out by hand. This is a good time to evaluate the fluid. This fluid does look pretty clean. Now, the warmer the vehicle is, the more fluid is going to come out as well as the faster it's going to come out. So that's something you wanna make sure that you're a bit aware of because getting sprayed in the face with this hot fluid is no fun at all. Now you have a couple of options here. We can wait until this stops draining and then take out the secondary plug, or we can go ahead and take the secondary plug out now. It really doesn't matter. It's kind of whatever you prefer. 
and it may also depend whether the customer is waiting or not. There is, like I mentioned, a secondary plug inside of here. You're going to need your eight millimeter Allen in order to remove that. And this eight millimeter Allen does need to be a little bit longer. You can see this one here is a little bit longer, eight millimeter. It's right in the center. So you get an idea of just about how far up that is. It's about an inch. So we're gonna go ahead and put this eight millimeter in and twist out this secondary plug. This is where you're gonna get the bulk of your fluid come out. Remember, safety equipment, as always, be careful. Again, we don't wanna get hit or sprayed in the face with this hot or cold, really, DSG fluid. You see, this is where we get a bunch of our DSG fluid out. Here's a good look at this secondary plug. It looks just like that. So we'll set that to the side, go ahead and let our fluid drain. Now there's several ways to fill the transmission back up. This is gonna really depend on the equipment that you have. At my shop, we use an electric driveline machine that we pump the fluid in. It is meant to be filled from this hole as well. Uh, some shops will use a hand pump. That's what we're gonna use for this video today. There's also a gravity fed tube that is a really common thing for like DIYers. I will tell you in a shop setting, it takes a long time to do it that way, as well as it does sort of mean you have to either raise and lower the car a bunch of times or work with the car a lot lower because you have to have the bottle held up higher than the transmission. But since we're gonna be using this five liter Penison jug, we're gonna be using a hand pump in order to pump it into the transmission. Another thing about fluid, you know, this fluid level is going to need to be checked in a temperature range of about 35 degrees Celsius. If you have a customer that comes in and is waiting for the DSG service, which at my shop is really common, there's a couple of things that we can do to overcome that. The by the book way again is to check the fluid level at 35 degrees Celsius. We'll use a scan tool. Personally, I use VAGCOM in order to do this and we monitor the transmission temperature. Once it hits 35 degrees, we should start to see a little bit of fluid come out of the transmission. Not too much different than what we're seeing right now. If the customer's there waiting, you can maybe store the fluid in the refrigerator or freezer. That'll bring down the temperature of the fluid because it takes the transmission a long time to cool all the way down low enough where you can have it below 35 degrees, start the car, raise it up, and then check to see how much fluid is coming out. So that's sort of another way to overcome checking the fluid level on a customer that's waiting. You can also do the measurement method where you measure how much fluid comes out and put back approximately the same amount of fluid. During these services, these cars do take just under five liters of fluid by the time you lose a little bit to the machine, lose a little bit to swapping the plug in and out from the machine to the drain plug. And remember, we're almost never gonna get all of the fluid out during a service. It comes in just under five liters. So I feel like we have a good amount of fluid drained from this transmission. This one was stone cold, so obviously it's gonna take longer for all of it to drain out. I'm gonna go ahead and put the secondary plug back in. And that's, again, just a plastic plug, so we don't need any tooling other than the eight millimeter Allen in order to remove it. I usually just sort of give it a hand tight just like that. All right, so we have our filling unit here. We're gonna go ahead and fill it right to the five liter mark with our Penison DSG fluid. So we have our filling unit all filled with DSG fluid. We're gonna bring it over to the car. We're going to take our tool end. This is going to, again, screw in right where the drain plug is, and we're gonna fill this transmission. All right, so this is the tool that we're gonna screw into the bottom of the transmission. This is gonna aid in us filling the DSG. And we'll go ahead and twist the filler on. You can see our valve here is open. That, that'll allow us to actually put fluid into the transmission. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna pump all of that fluid in. All right, so as you can see, we pumped just about all the fluid out. There's just a little bit less than a half a liter left in this filling unit. All right, next up, we're gonna go ahead and close the valve. Now that we have the valve closed, we're gonna actually start the car up and begin the process of warming it up so that we can properly check the fluid level. So we're gonna go ahead and start the car. We're going to jump in with our VAGCOM mobile and connect to our vehicle so that we can monitor the transmission temperature. The transmission temperature that we're looking for is approximately 35 degrees Celsius. 
We'll go into our functions, go into our measured values. Now we got a couple ways we can do that. We can just type 19. 19 is what we're looking for. Now here you'll see our transmission fluid temperatures. We're at idle and we're looking for this transmission fluid temperature which is now reading 17 degrees Celsius. We want that to read about 35 degrees Celsius. While this is warming up, what you're gonna wanna do is go ahead and cycle the car and cycle the gears through each gear, giving it a second or two in each gear. One, that'll help your transmission warm up a little bit faster. And two, that'll make sure we have fluid everywhere that we need to. Once the vehicle's running, we can actually remove the drain plug and that'll drain any excess fluid that we might have overfilled it with. It's not a bad thing to overfill the transmission fluid initially. We just want to make sure that we set the fluid level right. You can also use any other scan tool that you want as long as it'll measure transmission fluid temperature. What I'm using here is the VAGCOM mobile setup. So I'm using this with my iPhone as well as a Wi-Fi dongle inside the car. Since we were stone cold, this will take about 10, maybe 15 or so minutes, but that really all depends. I like to constantly monitor the transmission fluid temperature to make sure that I don't end up with the transmission too hot. 35 is about the temperature you want to start checking the fluid level. Once it gets too much over 40 degrees Celsius, you really have too hot of a transmission fluid temperature. You'll need to let the transmission cool back down so that you can properly check the fluid level. And again, if you have to cool the fluid down a little bit on a customer that's waiting, Going ahead and putting it in the fridge, the freezer, and bringing the temperature of the fluid down will help tremendously. As you can see here, we still have our fill unit hooked up to the vehicle. That's done in a way so that any excess fluid will actually drain back down this tube and back into our bottle so we really don't waste any fluid. All right, so we're at 27 degrees Celsius, just a few more degrees and we can go ahead and start our process of checking the fluid. Now, I know everybody has their own sort of way of doing things, the way I do it, is I pull the plug with the car running, similar to the way of checking Volkswagen automatic transmissions, and let any excess fluid drain. All right, so we're at the max temperature that we should be. We're gonna go ahead and check the fluid level. As I open the valve, we'll see some fluid come out. So we have our valve open. You'll actually see that's the amount of fluid left in the hose. So that's basically the amount of fluid that we overfilled it, which really, it looks like a lot while it's in that tube, but it's really not all that much fluid. But again, we wanna make sure that we do get the transmission fluid level correct. We're gonna go ahead and take the tool out of our transmission next, and we will probably lose a little bit of fluid. A tip is to make sure that we have the crush washer on the drain plug and ready to go so that we minimize the amount of fluid that we lose. Now that we have the drain plug hand tight, we wanna go ahead and make sure that we tighten it down. The torque spec on this is 45 Newton meters. If the vehicle had a belly pan on it, go ahead and put the belly pan on. We uh, sort of lucked out this one didn't have a belly pan on it. All right, guys, there you have it. We have completed one entire DSG service again. The only thing left from here is to clean up any mess that we made and go ahead and take the car on a test drive to make sure that we don't have any shifting concerns. Thanks again to the folks at Penniston for providing me with this kit to show you guys how to do the service. If you guys have any questions or comments, post it in the comments section below. Hey, if you like the video, throw it a thumbs up on YouTube. I always appreciate that. You can also subscribe to my channel, Humble Mechanic, on YouTube. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course at the blog at humblemechanic.com. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.